Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, a video I have been waiting years to make. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. A little X's and O's, your favorite concept, Hank. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. If you dig content like this, you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, X's and O's. People have been asking for this one for a long time. I've struggled. I didn't want to do it, but I finally got around to doing it. One of my least favorite concepts. Yeah, I feel like that's always a fan favorite around here. Talk about the least favorite concepts you see all across the league. We are talking Hank. Okay, in short, Hank is a concept that is mirrored, meaning both sides are the same. It is a sit over the ball for me, five-ish yards, six to eight yards over the ball with flat curl on both sides. Now, there are different iterations and tweaks we will talk about, but the idea of Hank and why it's been around so long, I think originally it was one of the kind of centerpieces of the West Coast world. Now, back in the day when all those West Coast world teams saw pure traditional country zone, it was a very efficient play. For me, the reason I dislike it is because of a number of different reasons. The first of all is it is a zone-centric play. So if you call Hank or get Hank called for you playing quarterback and it is not zone you are probably going to struggle to find a completion. So it's the idea being that, hey, if we know for sure that it's zone coverage, okay, great. I would push back and say, even if we know it's zone coverage, do we really want our first coverage to almost always be to an inline tight end who is five yards over the ball with a static route? Static route meaning to me the eligible is turning around and stopping their feet. In my world, in the way that I like to play quarterback in football, I don't want that eligible stopping their feet and or catching the ball five yards very often. That's the first part of it. The second part of it is that static route element. So not only is the first read have a static feet, meaning that they stop their feet, but the second read, the curls, the hanks, the hook part of it, they stop their feet as well to catch the ball. So your first read stops over the ball with their feet. The number two reads on both sides both stop their feet as well. So you've got these static routes that really limit the big play ability of this play. So even if you get a completion to your first read, which is a five-yard sit, that eligible will stop their feet. If that's covered and we throw it to the number two in this progression, that person has stopped their feet as well. And if that's not there, you're then going to throw a flat late on the sideline, probably catch, touch your toes in, and get out of bounds. So there's just no opportunity for a big play down the field. That's kind of the issue for me. The next part about it is the fact that it is a mirrored concept. A mirrored concept for me means that it's the same on both sides. I think a lot of teams have evolved into making it a little bit of a better play by having a man answer on one side or the other. So if you love Hank and you must call Hank, you must install Hank, you have the zone opportunity to one side, well then let's put a man-centric play on the backside. So if we can do some pre-snap movement to determine if it's man or zone. We can then play the zone side versus zone and the man side versus man or match or zone match. And so it's it's not that it's rare to see zone coverage in the league. I just feel like you don't know for sure and why would you roll the dice and only have zone answers unless you know for sure it's zone. And even when you know it's zone, your first read is five yard static route. Does not make sense to me. Regardless, people call it, continue to call it. You probably have heard me in other videos get frustrated about it. We are diving into it. Let's get it going. Hop into some deep Hank. All right, so Hank concept, my favorite, your favorite. We're going to talk through exactly what the read is to start. So the first part of this is the sit route. Over the ball, I guess right here, six, eight yards. I think of it as five, six yards over the ball. And essentially, that is the first read no matter what. It's almost always mirrored with curl flat. So curl 12-ish yards and into the flat on both sides. So that is Hank in general, the easiest way to think of it. Sit with flat curl. 
Now, the read with this is where it gets a little bit twisted. So it's not a true pure progression like I have identified back in the day here from the Saints. Pure progression to me would mean one, two, three, always the same side. To me, this is a little bit of a hybrid because it's zone-centric. So based on who covers the sit, so the near defender, you can see these linebacker types, boxes, you're welcome for that. Whoever covers the sit and takes it away, that's the side that we're going to work the flat curl to. So if the sit, if we can't throw the sit right here on time and it's taken away by the right inside backer, we're going to work curl two, flat three. So it's based on the coverage of the sit. Now, if you drop back, you take five, no hitch, and it, the sit is there right away, let's just put it right on him. You put it away from the near defender. So if the near defender is right here, you're going to put that ball away from the near defender, allow them turn, spin, fall up field. So it is a one, two, three read. If you can count to three, you can play for me, McCarthy used to say. This is a McCarthy install offense from back in the day, the Gulf Coast. But again, the bones of this are almost always going to be sit over the ball. And again, it doesn't always have to be the Y or the inline tight end. Right here, you can see regular personnel, zebra personnel, regular is 21, zebra is 11 in the West Coast world. Wide right is two by two, A right. I think was the motion of the back. Scat is the protection. 22 sets the hot or the dual side. And we are into the play, Hank. So Hank tells everybody what to do. From here, you can see the hots. Because it's five-person protection, we're going to have to have hots on both sides. You've got the flat, look hot, the sit, peak hot, and again, the flat, hot on the other side. If I was playing this play, I would want this backer right here as the identified linebacker for the offensive line to go to so the offensive line would be going to these four and right here and that's probably why it's not colored in so if any of these guys blitz technically you would have to throw hot one of the sides and again why i would want this backer to be the hot is because my first read is on this side so if we were to get something right off our edge right off our face we're able to raise up put it right on them okay so that's the hot situation but again, just to reiterate for my people in the back, all this play is, is sit with flat curl, flat curl, flat curl. And again, the read is one, two, three, but it's based on whoever takes the sit away. So just that simple. Now let's look at a few more images. All right. So here are a few more Hank installs. Okay. This is from the same playbook, New Orleans back in the day, Mike McCarthy. You can see here, it's the same play now just out of different personnel. So here's Tiger. Here's Zebra, different ex, different formations as well. Exchange is a shift. Far right, divide is the formation. Again, all here with motion. But pretend like you didn't even know what this was. You don't care what the personnel is. You don't care what the formation is. You know the play now already, right? It's sit over the ball, sit over the ball with flat curl. There it is, flat curl. Okay, now the one thing I will add, and I don't have an image of it because I'm so old, but nowadays... People run inverted Hank, or what I call inverted Hank. All inverted Hank does is it makes the flat curl switch to now we're going to run the, the curl by the number two, and the number one is going to run a one-step smoke. So you end up attacking the same space, but because this is such a zone play, let's throw our zone beaters versus linebacker types as opposed to versus corners. Okay, so you just invert who's got the flat, who's got the curl. So to me, that's inverted Hank. Again, I don't have an image. You just got to deal with it right there. But the read is the same. Who takes away the sit? Is it there? Put it on him. That's one, right? That's a 10-yard throw. Five-step drop, five-yard route. Put it away from the near defender from their flat curl. All right, one more from that same playbook. Again, you can see how often, and we talked about Hank. You know, it's a bit of a dinosaur play nowadays, but you still do see it probably too much. Again, this is another example of it. I can't even get through this play. Under right, fullback right, scat 22 Hank. Same thing out of 11 here, set right, scat 22 Hank. The beautiful thing about it, because you've already been through this install with me, you know the play. Sit over the ball, flat curl. And again, inverted Hank would just make the curls on the inside and a one step by the number ones on the outside. Again, numbering routes outside in. So one, 
two, three, as far as your eligibles. All inverted Hank does is switch the responsibility of the flat curl to now smoke curl. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for taking the time and doing that. Again, the quarterback school Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more quarterback school content. We also have quarterback school courses. Now, if you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the quarterback school courses. We've got a number of different courses. We've got courses on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you. So if you're interested in any and all of those, enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available, also linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. All right, so next one here is from a new playbook. This is from the Packers back in the day. This is 21 personnel, base, weak left is the formation, Scott left Hank. Okay, so it's the exact same play. Now, I forgot to mention something on the earlier installs. We'll talk about it on this image because they cleaned up and I remember it. But one of the issues that we've already talked about at this point in the video is one of the weaknesses of this play is, yes, the read is very simple, flat curl, something in the flat. This time it's a swing, flat curl. But verse man, okay, static routes, routes where you run up and turn around and stop, not great. Okay, so these that sit and that curl are static routes. So what a lot of teams would do is try to go verse man or bump or cloud. They would give these curls a lot of freedom at the top to run away. You know, these are great playbook plays, but these are a hell of a lot harder to execute when you don't know who the hell's going to be running these routes. So you've got to have a real connection with your wide receiver to understand that, hey, verse bump, he's not going to come up to a certain depth and turn around and run back to me. Instead, he's going to run away from the near defender. So yeah, this is a way to help make this play better. It all of a sudden makes it have some man coverage answers. But again, you know, are you going to be on the same page? Is this sit going to know, hey, I can return back versus man? It's great that it's on the piece of paper. In my opinion, anecdotally, this is really hard to execute consistently. But again, different team, same exact play. Hank, sit, flat, curl. One, two, three. You can count to three. You can play for me. All right, next one here. This is from the Bengals. Now, this is not what I would say is true Hank. Okay, This, to me, is what I've... Depending on the system you're in, you can see this is a digit system play versus a West Coast play. To me, Hank is much more West Coast centric, but digits will run this kind of 4-4-4 play, and really, it's a little bit of a deeper play, but the bones of it can be the same. So verse zone, which is what this dotted line is, just think of this as a deeper Hank. So now instead of 6-8, to eight, it's 12-14. to 14. Now instead of 12 yards, curls... It's deep curls at 18. So everything just pushes back. A lot of teams will call this ocean. Okay? Ocean to me just means deep hooks. Okay, you're welcome for that. Really complex football jargon. Okay, so this type of play, the read is the same. This is a Hank read. It's just deeper. Okay, so this is 09 Bengals for me. All we're going to do is read the same play, just deeper. Think of like third and forever type play where you know you've got to take a shot and you're most likely going to find zone coverage, true traditional country zone. So the read is the exact same. One, who takes it away? Push two, three. One, who takes it away? Push two, three. And again, the read would probably from gun here would probably be five, the drop. So again, Hank just different iterations. It bleeds over into so many different passing concepts. So this next one here, now we're back to New Orleans back in the day. So this was our answer or our attempt to answer Hank versus man or match. Okay, so we've already talked about how Hank is a zone-centric play. Okay, so this dotted line is flat curl, right? So if you looked at this from the outside here, just this area, this looks like Hank to a defense versus zone. It would be curl, flat, curl, flat. But we know we don't love Hank or curl flat or Hank versus zone. So instead, we would come up, and in this team, it was called Hawkeye. You call it whatever the hell you want. But it's a man answer. So verse man, you can see here, hook versus off coverage. 
man press here, we would run a tight seven or this corner. So you have runaways. Okay, again, don't love static routes in man coverage. So if we catch man, let's have this runaway where we get these opportunities to run away from the man or match coverage. Now, again, these are great playbook plays. These look awesome in a clinic. These are hard as hell to execute at a high level on Sundays. So again, asking the wide receiver to make this determination was a recipe for disaster for us. So yes, we could install it. We could talk about it. We could waste time practicing it, but we were almost never going to run this play in a game. So this next one is a different team. This is the Vikings for me back in the day. Now, again, I know that this is not Hank per se, where we've got to sit over the ball, but we used to run this as an answer for man versus Hank. So when you hear me complain, why do team teams keep calling Hank versus zone when they have man answers? This is one of those man answers. So again, double curl, right? We talked about Hank. Hank is sit over the ball with double curl or curl flat. And you can see flat curl, flat curl on both sides. Well, guess what? Verse man or cloud corner, eh, these things are going to convert. So you can see these dotted lines where we're able to come in here and again, run away. So one team calls it Hawkeye. The other team calls it double curl. It's really just a, a way to have an answer for the deficiencies of curl flat or Hank. So have these multiple runaway options. Now, again, there's a lot of time investing in getting to these things, all to have a somewhat optimal look, which is essentially with a mirrored concept, which is not great in my opinion for any type of concept, let alone this where we're asking these guys on the perimeter to make these decisions and for the quarterback to be on the same page versus man coverage in the NFL is hard as hell. All right, so that is a wrap. Your favorite, my favorite, Hank, it is rough. Don't call it, don't install it, throw it out of your playbook, but we will see it in the fall, and now I will be able to push you to this video so you better understand why it is a dumpster fire. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.